In this lesson, we will be talking about film coefficients, also known as heat transfer coefficients. But before discussing this topic, let us look into the approaches to solve a heat transfer problem numerically. Heat transfer simulations can be performed using a conduction-based solver or a computational fluid dynamic solver, also known as CFD solver. A conduction-based solver calculates heat transfer only in solids and models the fluid around the solid body using a convective boundary condition. This boundary condition reduces the problem to defining two parameters, the film coefficient and the bulk temperature, which we will be discussing in this lesson. This solution method is computationally inexpensive and easy to use. Another approach using CFD is to solve for heat transfer in both the solid and the fluid, including the interactions between the two. The use of CFD involves solving the fluid flow along with the energy equation for the fluid and the solid. It directly solves for the heat transfer between the two and there is no need to define film coefficients here as is needed in case of a conduction-based solver. This solution method is computationally more expensive and more complex to use. In this course, we are using a conduction-based solver. In the last lesson, we saw that convection is a complex process which is a combination of advection and diffusion processes. But in case of conduction-based solvers, convective heat transfer is modeled as a boundary condition. The convective heat transfer rate for a body having fluid flowing over its surface is given by this formula where Q is the heat transfer rate, H is the film coefficient, A is the surface area of the body in contact with the fluid, Ts is the temperature of the body surface in contact with the fluid, and Tb is the bulk fluid temperature. Rewriting the above equation in terms of convective heat flux rate at the surface, Qc, the equation can be rewritten in this form. In this equation, dt represents a temperature difference between the solid and the fluid. Then the film coefficient h may be thought of as the amount of heat flux needed to cause a unit difference in temperature between the solid surface and fluid bulk temperatures. To evaluate the value of heat transfer rate Q or heat flux QC, we need information on the film coefficient H and the bulk fluid temperature Tb. The film coefficient can be obtained by many means. For very simple scenarios, the film coefficient may be obtained analytically by solving the mass, momentum and energy equations. But in most of the cases, data for film coefficient is generated using equations and careful experimentation. This results in empirical relations being used for the film coefficients. A CFT-based solver directly solves the heat transfer simulation without requiring a film coefficient to be defined and this is another way of calculating film coefficient values. Hence, the product H times dt can be thought of as a convective boundary condition which models the fluid indirectly. The SI unit for film coefficient is watt per meter square Kelvin. In the imperial unit system, film coefficient is measured in BTU per hour feet square degree Fahrenheit, where BTU stands for British Thermal Unit. Now let us see what factors affect the film coefficient. 
The heat transfer coefficient depends on many of the fluid and surface properties along with field variables such as temperature. If we investigate the table here which compares the film coefficients for free and forced convection for various fluids, we observe a few things. First, the more viscous a fluid is, the higher is its film coefficient value. For example, water has a higher film coefficient as compared to air. A simple example of this is if you touch cold water and cold air which are at the same temperature, the water feels colder immediately. A second observation is that the fluid velocity also impacts the film coefficient. A forced convection has higher fluid velocity and hence will have higher film coefficient value. For example, we can see that forced convection for air has higher film coefficient value as compared to natural convection of air. A common example of this in our daily lives is when we switch on the fan on a hot day to cool ourselves. Forced convection occurs when a fan is switched on and due to the higher film coefficient, heat is removed from our body at a faster rate. Similarly, from the graph shown here, we can see that the film coefficient increases with an increase in temperature difference between the surface of the solid and the fluid. Also, geometry of the surface or the body impacts the film coefficient. In the graph here, we see that for a pipe having more sharp turns and bends, the film coefficient is higher. The reason for this is the turbulence that occurs due to turns and bends in the pipe, which in turn increases the film coefficient. Here is another example showing the impact of geometry. Consider we have a horizontal and a vertical plate. In the vertical plate, due to buoyancy effects, we see a higher film coefficient value. This is the reason why heat sinks employ vertical fins for faster heat dissipation. Next, let's talk about another parameter affecting the film coefficient value, which is the surface roughness parameter Ra. There are several parameters used to characterize the surface roughness. But Ra, which is the mean deviation of the surface profile, is used most commonly. It is measured in microns or microinches. In this chart of quenching, we can see how a rougher surface, indicated by higher Ra values, results in higher film coefficients. This happens because the rougher surface disturbs the fluid flow at the surface, and provides a bit more surface area in contact with the fluid. Next, let us investigate another important input needed for defining the convection boundary condition in conduction-based solvers. That parameter is the bulk temperature, Tb. This parameter represents the temperature of the bulk or average temperature of the fluid is also called fluid ambient temperature. The difference between the bulk temperature and surface temperature will decide the direction of heat flow. If the bulk temperature is higher with respect to the surface, then heat will flow from the fluid into the body through the surface and vice versa. The bulk temperature is a required input for the analysis and serves as a reference point for the convective boundary condition equation. It is worth noting that this bulk temperature is intended to characterize the temperature of the fluid at some distance from the solid surface rather than the temperature directly at the surface boundary. 
Now let's take a quick detour from conduction based solvers and look into the problem that a computational fluid dynamics or CFT solver simulates. CFT solvers perform a fluid dynamics analysis without using the film coefficient value. This problem solved by a CFT solver is a conjugate heat transfer problem that simultaneously deals with heat transfers in solids where conduction dominates and fluids where convection dominates. Also, the fluid itself will have some motion due to energy transport, fluid viscosity and change in fluid density. Solving such a problem is complex and time consuming. Hence, using the convection boundary condition with a conduction based solver is quite useful. It is faster, easier to solve and saves time. It allows us to evaluate the effect of fluid flow on the heat transfer in the solid without actually modeling the fluid. Some common examples where convection boundary conditions are used to predict temperature distribution in structures are heat exchangers and heat sinks. So to summarize, here are some important points to keep in mind. One, when applying convection boundary condition, film coefficient and bulk temperature should be defined appropriately by the analyst as the fluid flow is not being modeled. Second, we indicated earlier that film coefficient depends on temperature. So if we describe the film coefficient as a function of temperature, then the convection boundary condition becomes non-linear. Third, even if the value of film coefficient changes, solutions are relatively quick compared to computational fluid dynamic solutions. And lastly, it may be okay if we don't have the exact value of the film coefficient. Since we simplify a conjugate heat transfer problem when using a conduction based solver, parametric studies can be performed easily and quickly to provide the upper and lower bounds for our solution. Hence, Film coefficient and bulk temperature can be used with some conservatism. Now that we understand how convection occurs and how it is modeled as a boundary condition in a conduction based solver, we will look at a few practical applications of convection in the next lesson.